Hi, we are on the last part of this chapter and I am very excited. Hope you have seen the other parts and are good with them. We know how organisms get rid of gaseous waste generated during photosynthesis or respiration. Other metabolic activities generate nitrogenous materials which need to be removed. The biological process involved in the removal of these harmful metabolic waste from the body is called excretion. Different organisms use varied strategies to do this. Many unicellular organisms remove these waste by simple diffusion from the body surface into the surrounding water. As we have seen in other processes, complex multicellular organisms use specialized organs to perform the same function. Now let's see excretion in human beings. The excretory system of human beings include a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder, and a urethra. Kidneys are located in the abdomen, one on either side of the backbone. Urine produced in the kidneys passes through the ureters into the urinary bladder where it is stored until it is released through the urethra. Now, how is urine produced? As we know, the purpose of making urine is to filter out waste products from the blood. Just as carbon dioxide is removed from the blood in the lungs, nitrogenous waste such as urea or uric acid are removed from the blood in the kidneys. It is then no surprise that the basic filtration unit in the kidneys, like in the lungs, is a cluster of very thin walled blood capillaries. Each capillary cluster in the kidney is associated with the cup shaped end of a tube that collects the filtered urine. Each kidney has large number of these filtration units called nephrons packed close together. Some substances in the initial filtrate such as glucose, amino acids, salts and a major amount of water are selectively reabsorbed as the urine flows along the tube. Now, how much water is reabsorbed? It depends on how much excess water there is in the body and on how much of dissolved waste there is to be excreted. The urine forming in each kidney eventually enters a long tube, the ureter, which connects the kidneys with the urinary bladder. Urine is stored in the urinary bladder until the pressure of the expanded bladder leads to the urge to pass it out through the urethra. The bladder is muscular, so it is under nervous control as we have discussed elsewhere. As a result, we can usually control the urge to urinate. Kidneys are vital organs for survival. Several factors like infections, injury or restricted blood flow to kidneys reduce the activity of kidneys. This leads to accumulation of poisonous waste in the body which can be very fatal. In case of kidney failure, an artificial kidney can be used. An artificial kidney is a device to remove nitrogenous waste products from the blood through dialysis. Artificial kidneys contain a large number of tubes with a semi-permeable lining suspended in a tank filled with dialyzing fluid. This fluid has the same osmotic pressure as blood except that it is devoid of nitrogenous waste. The patient's blood is passed through these tubes. During this passage, the waste products from the blood pass into dialyzing fluid by diffusion. The purified blood is pumped back into the patient. This is similar to the function of the kidney but it is different since there is no reabsorption involved. Normally, in a healthy adult, the initial, fil in the initial filtrate is in the kidneys is about 180 liters daily. However, the volume actually excreted is only a liter or two a day because the remaining filtrate is reabsorbed in the kidney tubules. Guys, that was excretion in human beings. Let's move on to our next topic, excretion in plants. Plants use com 
completely different strategies for excretion than those of animals. Oxygen itself can be thought of as a waste product generated during photosynthesis. We have discussed earlier how plants deal with oxygen as well as carbon dioxide. They can get rid of excess water by transpiration. For other ways, plants use the fact that many of their tissues consist of dead cells and that they can even lose some parts such as leaves. Many plant waste products are stored in cellular vacuoles and like we just discussed, waste products may be stored in leaves that fall off. And lastly, other waste products are stored as raisins or gums, especially in old xylem. And yes, plants also excrete some waste substances into the soil around them. Before concluding this chapter, let's go through some important questions. Describe the structure and functioning of nephrons. As we discussed, a nephron is the basic unit of structure and function in the kidney. It is responsible for filtering waste and excess fluids from the blood and regulating the electrolyte balance in the body. Each kidney possesses approximately 1 to 1.5 million nephrons. A nephron consists of glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, long renal tube. Next question is, what are the methods used by plants to get rid of excretory products? Like we just discussed, method use, methods used are excess water is removed by transpiration, some waste products are stored in vacuoles of cells, some waste products may be stored in leaves which eventually fall off, and many waste products like raisins and gums are stored in non-functional xylem. The last question is, how is the amount of urine produced regulated? The amount of urine produced depends on the amount of excess water and dissolved waste present in the body. Some other factors such as habitat of an organism and hormone such as antidiuretic hormone ADH also regulates the amount of urine produced. We just completed this chapter. Does this way of studying biology with lots of pictures and videos helpful? If yes, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, be kind, make healthier choices and work hard because these are three pillars to a happy life. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.